Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia looks all right, doesn't she, Mother? She looks fine, David. How much longer do you think it'll be? There's no telling. You're a big help to a man in distress. Nobody can be of any help to you, David. Not now. <laughs> you look so calm, Mother. So do you. Do I? And in a way, I am calm. Well, I suppose I am, too. I keep telling myself that this is the moment we've been waiting for all these months. And that there's nothing to be worried about. Absolutely nothing. Of course not. You don't have to keep telling me that. Well, I... Don't want you to get upset, Mother. All right. You can keep on telling me if it'll make you feel better. You're a wise old duck. David, a little respect. I'm <laughs> about to become a grandmother. And not to a duckling, either. Mm-hmm. A hospital. I could close my eyes and know I'm in a hospital. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. smell of ether. And there are many closed doors. Well, where do we go from here? Let's, uh, let's walk down to the end of the hall. Seems to open out on a terrace of some sort. The nurse said it would be several hours. Well, that gives us plenty of time to do whatever we want to do. You know, I'm thinking I'm an awful sissy, Mother. You? David, that's the last thing you are. No, yes, I... I keep wishing it were me. That's not being a sissy. It's easier when it's yourself. You know where you stand, you... You know just where you're at. You're you're aware. But here we are, you and I, walking up and down a corridor of a hospital, and, and Claudia's... She's all right. Sure she is. It, maybe that's why I keep wishing I were her. No, there, there is a terrace here. Can we go out on it? No sign that says we can't. Come on. It would be a hot night. Isn't any air. Enough for you and me. <laughs> Have a chair, Mrs. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Norton, and the same to you. I'll just walk up and down if you don't mind. Go ahead. Where's that pipe of mine? Oh, here it is. Wrong pocket. All of New York seems to be quiet. It's as if it were waiting, too. Claudia seemed, seemed very, very chipper, didn't she? She always does. Like mother, like daughter. And husband. David, it won't be so long. Of course not. Probably be all over by the time I get this blasted pipe of mine lit. Would have to be temperamental when I need it most. Where are my matches? You put them in the pocket of your jacket. Oh, did I? It's good to come to a hospital when it's for something happy like this. Just think, David. When Claudia leaves here in a few days, you'll be bringing home your first child. Oh, it doesn't seem possible, does it? Say... Don't you think we can go in and see Claudia again? The nurse will tell us when. She's just as well alone for a while. Her husband really stops being important at a time like this, doesn't he? I mean, he's sort of an extra wheel, a spare tire that's gone flat. My husband's always important, David. You don't have to be standing by Claudia's bed holding her hand. She knows you're there. Yeah, but she's on her own. No, she isn't. We're helping. You may not know it. How would you like something to eat. You deserve a feast, Mrs. Brown. That's the best that I can give you right now. Give it to me later. Don't tell me you're not hungry. Don't tell me you are, Mr. Norton. Of course I am. I could could eat the side of an ox with an apple in its mouth. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. Later. We'll celebrate, Mother. hmm? You bet we will. I might even coax you to a little champagne. Won't be difficult with a toast to the three of you. The four of us. Your pipe working? Yeah, pipe's all right now. I've run out of matches. Here you are. I brought along a few extra packs of matches for you. (laughs) You you think of everything. We aim to please. Look. Look, the moon's rising. It's going to be a clear night after all. It's still hot. Untie your tie, David. I don't mind. Untie my tie? Do you think I I want to stand around looking like an expectant father? You do, anyway. I do not. I'm 
I'm calm and collected. And, oh, oops, ouch. What's mm. the matter? I just burned my finger with this match. I always thought matches were too short. Yeah. I think it's warmer out here than it is inside. Maybe if you'd stop walking up and down. Let's try the, the waiting room down the hall. Good idea. And maybe we can ask the nurse if... And Claudia... maybe Dr. Rowland will be here. Be careful, my mother. There's a step up. I see it. Here, let me take your arm. Get away, David. You're treating me like an old woman. Whenever I try to show off my manners, you and Claudia stop me. Oh, you poor persecuted boy. The waiting room's right down there on the left. I always thought they should hang pictures on the walls of hospital corridors. Sure you wouldn't like to go to a movie, Mother? That's the last thing I want to do. Maybe we could find a Mickey Mouse. Claudia loved Mickey Mouse. After the champagne, David. Look, you don't have to entertain me. (laughs) You're cute, you know it. Almost as cute as your daughter. I only hope Claudia isn't worrying about us worrying. She's such a worrier. Particularly when there's nothing to worry about. Exactly. Let's sit down here, Mother. They look like good, strong, sturdy chairs. Oh, they'll, they'll last all right. David, I'm not very good at making speeches, but as long as I know Claudia has you, I'll never worry about her. No. Thank you, Mother. I could go a million miles away. I could even be turning the last page of my book, and I'd feel safe about her. It hasn't been easy, having been a mother and father to your child, has it? It's been its own reward. I always thought that having a child would be very private business. Just mine and my wife's, but it isn't. It it started much longer ago than that. I remember the night we had Claudia. It's not possible it was over 19 years ago. Tonight, time is slow. It was the winter. I went to the hospital very much the way Claudia came tonight. Only I came alone. Mr. Brown was on a train. He had to leave just a little while before it all started... When he came back two days later, it was nice showing him a daughter. You had spunk, Mama. No more than Claudia has, David. 200 miles, 2,000 miles, or 200 feet. It's the same distance for a woman. Ah, this pipe's gone out again, honestly. A man can't depend on anything, can he? Not at a time like this, he can't. What time is it? It's still early. You sure you wouldn't like to get a bite to eat? I'm positive. What would I do if you did? <laughs> well, simple, you'd buy me a bite. I love you. Sitting there with your feet crossed and your hands in your lap looking as if this happened to you every day. It has, in a way. You look pretty much like that yourself, David. You're shaming me into it. Am I? <laughs> That's good. I'm just going to sit here without a, without a thought in my head. I'm going to imagine the day when... My son will put on his first long pants, catch his first trout, go away to uh, to school for the first time, receive his degree from from college, and take unto himself a bride in the image of his grandmother. If Claudia and I have a daughter, I'm going to name her after you, Mrs. Brown. I'm very touched. Very touched. Mm. About what, half past nine? Is that all? You have moved in quite some time, Mother. No place to go. I'm not wasting my energy on just moving around. Is that Dr. Rowland coming down the hall? So it is. Uh, Dr. Rowland. Dr. Rowland, how is she? Oh, Mr. Norton. Claudia's doing fine, just fine. It will be just a while longer. Oh. Ah, just a little patience, my boy. Everything is proceeding according to schedule. Uh, Have you had yourself some dinner? Well, uh, my... uh... Uh, Claudia's mother isn't hungry. (laughs) Grandmothers usually aren't, neither are fathers. Would you like to go in and see Claudia for a moment? Well, if it's all right, I I don't want to... I mean, I don't think that I would have... Go right in. She's quite comfortable now, but only stay a moment. I'm going downstairs and have myself a cup of coffee. I'll be back in about 20 minutes. Good evening, Mrs. Brown. Oh, Dr. Rowland, it's good to see... Well, David, what did he say? He said we could go in and see Claudia for a moment. You go in, David. Well, don't you want to come, too? I'll wait for you here. I'd rather. Whoever said anything about mother-in-laws didn't know you. Darling. David, you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. How are you? I'm fine. Just fine. 
Sorry to be taking such a long time over this business. I thought we'd be home by now. What's the big hurry? No hurry. It's a nice room. Mm, it is. Did you have a good dinner? Yeah, yes, a, a fine dinner. I was afraid you wouldn't eat. Will you stop worrying about me? I'm big enough to take care of myself. And the trouble is, you don't. <laughs> Mama have dinner, too? Well, certainly she did, both of us. We, we gorged ourselves. Good. And what? Well, we had, we had soup, and then we had meat and vegetables, and then we had... Well, I, I, I don't know. What do people usually eat? You're making me hungry. You big bluff. Then we walked by a movie house. There was a, a Mickey Mouse playing, but we decided to wait until you could see it with us. It was very sweet of you. Maybe you, you, you better not wait. Why don't you and Mama go and see it now? Maybe we will. And I'll, I'll come back and tell you all about it. Do that, darling. David. What, dear? I hope it's a, a wonderful Mickey Mouse. Everything's going to be wonderful. You just wait and see. You don't have to tell me. I know it is. Well, I... I promised Dr. Roland I'd only stay a minute. Don't let Mama worry, oh, will she's you, David? Not, she's not worrying, darling. The thing for you to do is to stop thinking about us. No, that's not right. I'm thinking about you all the time. I want to think about you. You know, I... I almost wish now that we had... Oh, darling, you don't. You don't mean that. This is just the way we want everything to be. I'm glad. David, I, I'm... I can't explain why, but I'm not afraid. Because, David, I love you so. Doing your July 4th marketing today? Don't forget that case of Coca-Cola if you haven't already gotten it. For Coke is such a basic part of holiday merrymaking. And it helps make home parties so easy on the lady of the house. You don't want to spend your weekend cooking and bustling about. With sandwiches and salads prepared, cookies or cake ready, all you have to do is get out that ice-cold Coca-Cola and you're all set, indoors or out, to lunch or dine refreshed. Hello, Joe. Chin up, man. Pretty soon you'll be a father. Yeah, but not soon enough to suit me. Daughter or son? Either, either one, just as long as it's a son. Well, you've been counting on a son, though, haven't you? Mm, that's Claudia's fault. She says we were the type to have sons. Doesn't mean a thing. Sure, I know. Hey, look, stop looking so forlorn, David. You're not the only man this has happened to. Has it happened to you? Three times. My hat's off to you, my man. My hat is off. Well, just fill your pipe and smoke it, David. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Leave it to Claudia. Sure. And on Monday. Well, on Monday, we'll all find out. Will it be a son, Norton? Or a daughter, Norton? Oh, I wish it were Monday now. Well, so long, Joe. So long, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.